Hello, top drivers. Here we are, and welcome to this first tutorial video dedicated to the iRacing platform. Today, with the first episode of a long series of iRacing tutorials, we'll explore what awaits us once we've subscribed and downloaded all the necessary content from the platform, particularly the iRacing UI application. Now we're inside the iRacing UI interface. This is the main dashboard where iRacing welcomes us with essential information, offers, and statistics. For example, in this white panel, we can see our most recent races, personal stats, and our current license progression. To move efficiently within iRacing, we need to start with the key elements. At the top of the screen, iRacing displays which season we are currently in, along with real-time updates on the community and our performance. On the right-hand side, there are some essential icons. The notification bell, which alerts us to updates and important messages. The content icon, where we can download and update our assets. The shopping cart, where we can add any content we wish to purchase. Now let's shift to the left side of the screen. Here we find a series of important icons that act like large folders, each containing different sections. The first section is iRacing, which includes the quick action tab. From here, we can go straight to the track for a test drive using content we've already purchased or free assets available to us. The second section is racing. This contains several subsections. Home, which is the screen we are currently viewing. Profile, where we can check our license status and personal statistics. Statistics, which compiles all our recent race data and results. This section also includes detailed graphs categorized to show our progression in terms of I rating and safety rating, which we'll explore further in upcoming tutorials. My content, which lists all the assets we own, whether purchased or free. The third section is multiplayer, which offers different subcategories. Official, where all the official races are available based on our license level. These are organized directly by iRacing and are part of the platform's competitive ecosystem. League, which includes the championships and events we have joined. Unlike official races, these competitions are organized by private groups and are not part of iRacing's official structure. Hosted, where we can find private or public servers, depending on whether they require a password, that we can join to participate in various competitions. If a server requires a password, we must enter it to gain access. If it's not protected, we can join freely. In this section, we can also create our own servers to organize practice sessions or custom races. Next, we have the team section where we can create our own team or search for an existing one to join. The last category in the multiplayer section is spectator, which allows us to watch ongoing races without actively participating. Moving on to the single player section, we can race solo in time trials or compete against AI opponents. Another key section is more, which contains several useful tools. Here we can review our session results and statistics, analyze data to better understand our performance, and access the replay area where we can save and rewatch race recordings or memorable sessions we want to keep. In the next video, we'll explore more features of the platform and learn how to make the most of them to enhance our iRacing experience. Now let's move on to the second main icon, Shop. This section contains all the purchasable content available on iRacing. The Cars and Tracks subsection allows us to buy new cars and circuits, expanding our driving experience with additional content tailored to our preferences. In the More section of the shop, we can find additional products such as merchandise, gift cards, and other extra content offered by iRacing. The final major section is Paint, which is entirely dedicated to customization. Here we can select a car and modify its appearance by changing the livery, colors, race number, and other aesthetic details. We can also personalize the driver's helmet and racing suit to match our style. Now let's move to the lower part of the left side column where we find three additional icons. Although they are less essential than the ones we covered earlier, they are still useful. The first one is options, which gives us access to settings. Here we can configure interface and display preferences iRacing automatically applies an optimized setup, but if we want to fine-tune certain aspects, this is the place to do it. The second is Help, where we can find support resources and guides to resolve any issues or learn more about the platform. Lastly, we have the Forum section, which redirects us to the official iRacing community page. Here we can interact with other drivers, browse discussions, and participate in various threads. Now let's take a look at the right side of the interface. 
At the top, we see the helmet icon. Clicking on it opens the account settings, where we can update our profile, switch between light and dark mode, and access the logout option to disconnect from the platform and return to the desktop. Further down, we can see our five licenses, displaying their current status, along with our I rating, safety rating, and other statistics related to our iRacing performance. Finally, in the bottom right corner, there's a small window that expands with a single click, revealing our friends list. From here, we can check who's currently on track, see who's online, and send friend requests to other drivers by simply typing their name. That's everything you need to know about the iRacing UI interface. I hope this video was helpful. Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and we'll see you in the next tutorial here on the Universita del Sim Racing Channel.